In this video, I'm going to take a look at another type of game theoretic model called normal form games. So this is the situation where my friend Elliot and I want to buy a next-gen console. We're deciding whether or not to go for the PS4 or the Xbox One. And the utilities at the end simply correspond to the situation where as long as we do the same thing, we'll both be relatively happy and we both prefer uh, PlayStation. What we've got here is these two nodes live in the same information set. So when I make this decision, I don't actually know what Elliot has bought. So now we're going to take a look at a better way of representing this. This better way is called a normal form game. What we require is a set of n players. In this instance, n is 2, and they are Elliot and I. We require strategy space for the players. So simply, what each player can do, and in this instance, the strategy spaces are the same, Elliot and I can do the same thing, and it's whether or not to buy an Xbox or a PS4. And finally, we have a payoff function for the players, which simply maps any combination of strategies to a real number. And this is how we can represent the above game. It's called a buy matrix. It's a matrix of, uh, of doublets for two players. This works for two players that way. And what we've got are the column players correspond to player two and the rows uh, correspond to player one. So for example, there, that, that column there corresponds to me getting an Xbox, and that column corresponds to me getting a PS4. This row there corresponds to Elliot getting an Xbox, and this row to Elliot getting a PS4. So if we both get an Xbox, we get 0.5.5 each. Um, if Elliot gets a PS4 and I get an Xbox, Elliot gets 0.1, I get 0, etc, etc. A very important concept in normal form games is the concept of mixed strategies. So for certain reasons, and they'll become clear very soon, you might ne need to allow your players to mix strategies randomly. And so then what we do, we're going to represent this with a sigma i, which is just a probability distribution over the strategy space for player i. So for example, here are two probability distributions. This could be mystery buying an Xbox with probability 0.3 and myself buying an Xbox with probability 0.8. And just putting the matrix up there so we remember it, we can very easily calculate the expected utility by simply taking the weighted sum of the utilities in each uh, point of the buy matrix. And so we have uh, 0.3 times 0.8, that's the probability of being here, times 0.5, um, and 0.3 times 0.2, times 0, etc., etc. So we're just going to finish off by looking at what happens when I always buy an Xbox. So my probability distribution is 1, 0. I'm going to simply draw this uh, using Sage. So what I'm defining there is a function of x, and that's going to be Elliot's utility, where X is his probability of buying an Xbox. So if you remember the buy matrix, that's going to be X times a half. He gets a half when he uh, buys an Xbox, because remember, I'm always buying an Xbox. And then he gets 0.1 uh, when he buys a PS4. Uh, uh, remember, I'm always buying an Xbox. So if we just run that, we get that the uh, function has been programmed in to get a... To, Tell it to stay in integers, I can just run that. And so that is our function. That is Elliot's utility when I always buy an Xbox as a function of his probability of buying an Xbox. And if we plot that, what we see here is something that's quite simple to understand, that as Elliot's probability of buying an Xbox increases, his utility increases up to 0.5. So what we can see from this curve is that if I'm buying an Xbox, the best thing Elliot can do is to set x equals to 1, which maximizes this function, and x equals to 1 is to buy an Xbox. So as long as we do the same thing, we'll both be happy. 